HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. Coming up on this edition of HCAM News, Director of Public Works John Westerling joined me in the HCAM studios for a live public forum about town trash and recycling collection. We'll tell you how the Hillers baseball team fared on senior night and Hillers varsity girls basketball coach Mike Greco joined me in the studio to talk about the Hillers girls basketball summer camp for third through ninth graders. But first, this past weekend Memorial Day festivities took place in Hopkinton. Despite the rain, once again a largely attended Memorial Day ceremony took place in Hopkinton. The ceremony was held at St. John's Parish Center due to rain. On the Friday leading up to the ceremony, Hopkinton Boy and Girl Scouts replaced flags on veteran grave sites at Evergreen and Mount Auburn Cemetery. Hi, we're here to do memorial stuff. For flags. For, for, for flags, we're putting flags in the graves so that uh, yeah. they get new flags and yeah. they be represented. Are you guys in the Scouts? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, what Scouts. What troop are you from? 680667. Oh, we're doing it here. Oh, very nice. So yeah. You're, so you're uh, replacing all the flags? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. My mom's a troop leader. Well, you guys are doing great work. Keep it up. Thanks. Thanks. And then a large turnout was on hand for the ceremonies to remember the heroes who sacrificed everything for our freedoms. The patriotism that brought us all here today is more than the pride it takes to chant USA, USA at a sporting event. It's deeper than that. It is more than just pride, it's gratitude. What have brought our country together on the first Decoration Day and what unites us when our soldiers came home after World War II was the same emotion that overcame America when we landed on the moon. Not simply a feeling of pride, but a feeling of deep respect and appreciation. It's been said that the character of a community is, re is revealed in the way that it treats its loved ones. Gathering here today and bowing our heads respect for those who made the ultimate sacrifice is the type of patriotism that is handed down from generation to generation. Lieutenant Foley is currently stationed at Hands Air Force Base in Bedford where he serves as a development engineer. He's here today accompanied by his girlfriend, Tiffany. Please welcome him, our native son, back to Hopkinton, Lieutenant Mike Foley. So today is about memorializing those who've come before. And it's not just about remembering. It's also about a call to each and every one of us who is still alive, still here today. Uh, everybody talks about being thankful, being grateful, and I, I want to echo what several people have already said since I think it's the most important part, is that it's also a call to duty and a call to service. Not everybody's going to serve in the military. <clears throat> Not everybody's going to go off to war. Not everybody, thankfully, will live in a time of war. 
unfortunately we do now, and it's a reality that every day there are more and more people added to the roll of honor of each of the services, the names of those who've fallen. But there'll come a time when we'll live at peace again, and as has been said, there's no such thing as a good war and no such thing as a bad peace. And that's when the call to service for all of those who don't wear the uniform comes to the forefront. It's easy to honor those who serve. We talk about buying a cup of coffee. And that's wonderful. There are tons of veterans out there who are incredibly grateful in their families for each and every act of kindness that's brought to them. But the call to service is two parts. There is also the call to serve your nation as a citizen, as a mother, as a father, as a teacher, as a student. Every single job has merit and value if you look at it as a part of making our country great. Despite the rain, it was a great ceremony at St. John's Parish with an excellent turnout to honor the heroes who sacrificed for this country. This past week in the HCAM studios, Director of Public Works John Westerling joined me for a live forum to discuss options going forward in trash and recycling collection for the town of Hopkinton. Here is a look at the proposed changes being discussed. We are looking at three different options actually. Uh, we're at the end of a five-year contract with E.L. Harvey. So we're working with E.L. Harvey, we're negotiating with them on three different options. Uh, the first option is to maintain the status quo, current service, which is trash folks put out in their own barrels and recyclables they put out in either a recycling bin or an old hamper or other modes of, of collecting the, the recyclables. The second option that we're looking at is automating both the collection of trash and recyclables, which I'll show you in a moment. Folks will get a wheeled cart where they can put their trash and recyclables in and bring those out to the curb and those are collected automatically through the automated system. Uh, the final option that we're looking at is to automate the collection of recyclables but leave trash in its current format. In other words, you would have a large cart for your recyclables but you'd put out your trash in your own barrels. So ultimately, is this gonna save the town money? Is it gonna save the citizens money? It actually is, and the reason that we're looking at these three different options is that the more people recycle, the less the town has to pay when the trash is brought to Millbury, to the wheelbrader facility, the less we have to pay to dispose of it. So the more people recycle, the less we have to pay for trash. Um, it's also, um, what it, the statistics actually show that uh, for those communities that do use the trash barrels, uh, the, the 64 gallon uh, trash barrels, that those, those families in those communities, they generate 13% less trash. So that would translate to an immediate savings for our trash disposal. Oh. So if, if I can just explain that the current system allows for, allows for residents to put out their trash two barrels per week, but the barrels cannot exceed 39 gallons. So you can't, when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, other stores, you can't find a 39 gallon trash barrel. What they sell are 32 gallon trash barrels. Mm -hmm. So what I have here, I have two of the 32 gallon trash barrels. And what people do in the case of a 32 gallon trash barrel is something called snow coning. In other words, they pile the trash on top. Um, so we've got two trash barrels that in this case, we have 75 gallons of the same volume of what we would see in the trash that folks would put out. So if we went with full automation of trash, this is what every home who's currently being collected by E.L. Harvey under the town system, mm -hmm. which is single family, two family, and three family, everyone would receive one of these barrels. It's a wheeled cart. It's very easy to maneuver um, and also fully loaded. It's very easy. This cart is 64 gallons. Yep. So if folks are... What I wanted to show is that if folks are currently putting out 75, 79, somewhere around 80 gallons worth of trash, uh, I'll just take a moment while we're talking and show you that although this is only one container, the volume that it holds is the same that you'd be able to put out of the trash, out of the curb today in your two barrels. And remember these two were snow coned and also, people don't have to pay for these, correct? 
That's absolutely correct. The savings to the community are twofold. Um, one is that folks would receive one of these for trash and one of these for recyclables at no cost to either the town or residents. So what's the difference between these? How do you know what one's trash what one's recycling? You can see that snow cone in the smaller barrels or snow cone in the larger barrel, you'd still be able to put out the same amount of trash. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that we'd be able to identify these is that we can select our colors. There's a small palette of colors from which we can choose. We would likely go with something like uh, green or blue for recycling and gray or a different color for, for the, excuse me, for trash. Recycling would be a different color. The full broadcast of the Recycling Forum can be viewed on our YouTube page or found on our website, hcam.tv. There is a lot more ahead on HCAM News, including a look at Hiller's baseball as they entered the final few games of the season. Courtney will get you up to date with the latest programming coming up on the HCAM channels. And right after the break, Earlier this week, Hillers Girls Varsity basketball coach Mike Greco stopped by to talk about the Hillers Girls basketball camp. You're watching HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? You're tuned in to HCAM News. Tom Nappy here with Hiller's Varsity Girls basketball coach, Mike Greco. Mike, how are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you very much for having me. And I understand the uh, basketball camp is once again happening this summer. Talk about uh, this year's camp. Sure. We are once again uh, holding our summer camp in July. It's the third week. It's going to be July 18th to 22nd. Uh, we're going to run the camp from uh, for five hours, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. each day. You know, and it's, it's for girls um, that want to learn basketball, that want to improve their games, all skill levels, you know, currently in grades three through eight. You know, we've got a lot of room left. Um, camp's about half full right now, and, and we're really looking forward to getting started. Now, what are some of the drills that you work on in this camp? We work on all aspects of the game. You know, we spend time, um, you know, getting them stretched out and, and ready to play so they don't injure themselves. We then work on ball handling and passing drills that, you know, are kind of age and skill level appropriate. We kind of differentiate the camp that way a little bit, you know, so the older kids get to work on some of the more advanced stuff. Um, you know, and then there's, there's, every day has a different theme. You know, we work on shooting and offensive moves for a day. We work on defensive stuff for a day. We work on uh, boxing out and rebounding different ways to use screens, how to play one-on-one -on -one or three-on-three, -three, building all the way up to five-on-five, -five, playing full court, um, all the while really stressing the fundamentals and, and you know, as well as having fun and, and learning the game in a competitive atmosphere. You know, we, we get kids that are, you know, there for the first time that have never played the game before, all the way up to kids that, you know, might be trying out for the varsity team the following season. And this camp's been running for many years now. How have the kids enjoyed it so far? Camp's been around uh, all the way back from the legendary uh, coach Dick Bliss, so it's been over over 35 years now, um, and it's certainly evolved over the years. But you know, f feedback has always been very, very positive. Um, last year was my first year heading up the girls' camp, you know, and I think we had really, really positive reviews, and girls looked like they had a fantastic time. Can you take us through a day at the camp, time-wise? Sure. 
Um, so the girls will, will check in about uh, you know eight or eight fifteen. They have a few minutes to warm up and shoot around before we start to take attendance. Um, you know they'll they'll meet with a coach and a counselor. Uh, one of the nice things about our camp is that you know the Parks and Rec Department is is so generous with um, the amount of staff that they let us hire. We have about a four to one camper to coach ratio, um, and so from there. You know, they'll, they'll check in, we'll take attendance, we'll get them stretched out with some of the counselors, we'll work on some fundamentals, ball handling, uh, passing, shooting um, type stuff. We'll usually do a short mini lecture. You might be on shooting or defense or rebounding, one of those skills I talked about earlier. And then by now it's about uh, 9.30 or so and we start, you know, getting into some of our competitions. We have a uh, dribble tag competition, we have a Coca-Cola shootout competition. Um, we have a free throw shooting competition, one-on-one uh, -on -one and three-on-three. -on -three. And so, they, you know, we play different types of games to, you know, let the kids work on their skills in a kind of competitive environment. Um, and then after we've done that for a little bit, usually somewhere around uh, 10, 30, 11 a.m., we start our first morning game. So the kids are playing, you know, full court, four-on-four or five-on-five, depending on numbers. Um, and then we'll break for lunch, you know, and then the kids have about a half hour break or so for lunch. You know, they all seem to eat in about five minutes and get right back in the gym, which is great. Um, after lunch, you know, we'll do another sort of mini, you know, 10, 15 minute, you know, lecture slash demonstration on another skill, work on that at their home baskets a little bit. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll finish the afternoon with one more game before sending them home. And this camp, it must uh, significantly increase the, the game of these players. It must help them out quite a bit. Yeah, you know, we, we always say, you know, going to summer camp is great um, because we can, you know, really work with them in, in small group settings. You know, they get to work with a lot of the varsity players, the varsity coaching staff, um, you know, and, and come see us again in the winter. But, you know, they get a lot of that individual attention. But more importantly, they learn how to improve their game on their own as well so that they can take some of these drills and take some of these activities home um, work on it in their driveway, work on it with a parent or, you know, call a couple of friends over to play two on two or three on three and, and really practice this stuff. But it, it certainly helps build the program. All right. Well, that's the Hillers Summer Girls Basketball Camp. And the dates are? Dates are July 18th to 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. All you got to do to sign up is visit the Parks and Rec website or you can visit the Hockington Girls Basketball website through the high school. Uh, and there's a link right there and, and additional information about the camp as well. All right. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you very much for having me. I had a great time. You can take a look at the interview again or find all the information about the Hillers Girls Basketball Camp on our website, hcam.tv. Heading into senior night, the Hillers baseball team was one win away from clinching a playoff spot, while Medway was one win away from clinching the division. Here are the highlights from what was an absolute battle on Hillers senior night. Senior night and the last regular season home game for Hillers baseball as they took on the Medway Mustangs. Medway one win away from clinching the TVL title. The Hillers one win away from a playoff spot. Bottom of the first, Medway leading one to nothing. The Hillers changed that pretty quick. Center, that'll drop down. Halloran around second, over to third. It'll be runners at the corners with no outs for the Hillers. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is lined in a right field. That'll drop in, and the Hillers will tie things up, and maybe more as Vakari being waved around. It's 2-1 Hopkinton. A two-RBI single for Alex Reynolds. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is first base side. That'll get into right field. Reynolds around to score, and it is 3-1 Hillers. An RBI single for Jeff Haller. Six batting average on the season. And he will put this one up the middle, and that'll find a gap in his center field. Another Hillers run around to score as Simi comes around. It's 4-1 to one, Hopkinton. An RBI single for Connor Hebert. Wind up and the pitch. And this is going to get into left field. Another run coming around to score as LeBlanc comes around. And it's another RBI single for the Hopkinton Hillers. 5-1 to one is now the score. Top of the third, Medway trailing five to one. one out. Delivers, third base side, and it's going to get by the third baseman into left field. A run coming around to score, it's five to two. Rose a little too far. Hit in the air, this is crushed towards left field, towards the fence, and that is gone! 
a three run homer and this game is tied at five. Tyler Monahan powering that one out of the ballpark. The Medway Bats did some more damage on the top of the fourth. On the ground, first base side, that'll get into right field. One run already in a score, second run being waved around, and it is seven to five Mustangs. A two RBI single for Nick Assad. Nazi delivers. Third base side, and that's going to get by the reach of blank. One run in the score for the Mustangs. An RBI single for Downing. Zell comes around, an 8-5 lead for Medway. After a single and a walk puts two on with no outs for the Hillers in the bottom of the fourth, the Mustangs bring in Sean Patinji to take over on the mound for Nick Assad. However, the Hillers' bats keep going. Wide up and the pitch. And this is hit into right field, and that is going to drop into fair territory. One run in, another run coming around, and the Hillers add two. It's eight to seven. Light up and the pitch, and this is hit in the air to center field, and a great catch, but tagging up and coming around is Vakari, and it is a tie game. Top of the fifth, the Mustangs' bats continued. Right up in the pitch, the bunt is down and pulled back. Ball four, second walk for Ansi, and that's gonna do it. After starter Tom Ansi walked a pair with one out in the inning, Drew Simi came in to pitch for the Hillers. He managed to get the leadoff hitter Jeff Wenzel to ground out, but Nick Assad kept the offense going for Medway. Simi deals. And this is going to take a couple hops on the infield grass glove by the third baseman. Throw to first is not in time. And two runs are going to score for the Mustangs. TJ Nelson came around from third, and Broder all the way from second comes around. And it is 10 to 8 on the two RBI single from Nick Assad. The Hillers trailing 10 to 8 in the bottom of the fifth. Two outs, bases loaded, Alex Reynolds at the plate. And this is hit into right field, and that'll drop down for a base hit. One run in, another run being waved around, and that is going to be a tie game. And now Bakari coming around, and he'll score as well. It's 11 to 10 Hillers. But then the hitter, Alex Reynolds, thrown out as he goes to third. But no worries as Hebert, Wolf, and Bakari all come around to score, and the Hillers once again Take the lead on the three RBI double by Alex Reynolds. Top of the seventh, the Mustangs down to their final out. Nick Assad at the plate with two men on base. On the ground, up the middle, gloved and bobbled by the shortstop. The throw home is gonna get away, the ball game's tied. A bobble by Vakari and Aaron throw home, and it's 11 to 11. Top of the eighth, two on, two outs for TJ Nelson. The pitch. And this is hit up the left side. That'll get into left field. Tyler Monahan, the lead runner, being waved around third. He'll come in and score. And the Medway Mustangs take the 12 to 11 lead. The Mustangs end up with the victory over the Hillers in what was an absolutely amazing game. The final score was 12 to 11 Medway in eight innings. The Medway Mustangs clinched the TVL title with the victory. A big congratulations to both teams on quite an amazing game to watch. Despite the loss, Hillers baseball did end up clinching a playoff spot. They finished the season 10 and 10 overall. Be sure to stay tuned to our Facebook, Twitter page, and website hcam.tv for all Hillers Spring Sports playoff updates. With summer here and school in its last few days, a whole lot of new programming has been and will continue coming your way on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney to tell you everything you need to know with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. 
On Friday, June 3rd at 8 p.m., Denise Hildreth returns to give an update on youth and family services on Hopkinton Coffee Break. A lot of what I've done is meeting with parents for consultation around a variety of challenges that they might be facing. Everything mm -hmm. from divorce, from significant loss, from behavioral challenges, mm -hmm. mental health challenges with kids or mm -hmm. adults in the family, um, substance use and mm -hmm. abuse, um, mm -hmm. need for addiction related support. On Saturday, June 4th at 1.30 p.m., the Hillers take on the Mustangs in baseball versus Medway. On Monday, June 6th, Tom Nappy is joined by HHS students to give a sports update on a new HCAM News Focus. At 7 p.m., the 2016 Helen Creeley High School Student Poetry finalists read their poems on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. My name means soul in Spanish, and young woman in Hebrew, and if someday I lose myself, I hire my name to place in my stead, allowing me to become it. On a new physician focus at 8.30 p.m., how the media and CDC address new contagions and how the public should react are discussed. The visual images that you would see during the coverage of the outbreak reinforced some underlying narratives about um, how things were out of control, uh, as opposed to that we had a plan in place and we're getting things under control. On Tuesday, June 7th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the eighth grade spring concert will air. HCAM has so much programming to offer, and you can find out more by visiting hcam.tv slash connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to keep up to date with what's going on around town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can view the entire broadcast of the Town Recycling Forum plus much more. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings, and coming up, a special edition of HCAM News, as with the help from a few guest hosts from Hopkinton High School, we will show you some of the best highlights of the spring sports season. Take care and thank you for watching HCAM.